Welcome back to Detailed Reviews where we have a look at the Outlander PHEV and try and get a good look at it for everyone to have a look at it. So one of the most common questions I've been asked in the comments is what sort of range do you get from it and what kind of economy do you get out of it? Those are the questions that I'm seeking to answer today. Please remember to like and subscribe, it really does make a difference. The first thing we want to have a look at is what is the total range of the car from a completely full battery. I've already done about 2.4 kilometers on this charge, but let's just reset the timer and go for a trip until the battery runs completely flat. This trip is going to be mostly at 100 kilometers per hour, bit of traffic in it, it's going to be getting dark as we're driving along, so this is pretty real world. You can see I've been driving for 54 kilometers now and according to the gauge down the bottom you can see just above ready I've got two kilometers left of range. I've now traveled another four kilometers but the range estimate has only dropped down by one kilometer to one and then after a while it drops down and just says it doesn't know anymore. I'm now at 59 kilometers and the EV mode gets cancelled because the battery is too low. So that's about 59 kilometers plus the 2.4 I did earlier in the day. So that's about 61, 62 kilometers on a full charge. Remembering though, of course, this was a lot of the time at motorway speed. It wasn't around town, it was pretty non-stop. Though I did only get an average of 62 kilometers per hour due to traffic. So doing a bit of maths, times the numbers together that means I've used 15.6 kilowatt hours now when you look at the specs the specs say that the car has 20 kilowatt hours so there's either something not quite available there it's saving a little bit back for hybrid mode or something along those kind of lines I'm now on one of the very few roads in New Zealand that allows speeds of 110 kilometers per hour so Let's get an idea what sort of economy we were getting, and it seems to be about 7.8 after a 4 kilometer drive. No accelerating, just straight. It's the next morning now. I've given the car a little bit of a charge. I'm going to put the heater right up to maximum, and I'm just going to go long enough until the heat starts to really come out well and proper. So let's see how many kilowatt hours we get trying to do that to it. So here I am, 1.2 kilometers later, a nice warm car and 40.0 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometer. So that's not very efficient, but then again, I gave the car quite a job to do to get me nice and toasty warm. And you can see it's only nine degrees outside. This time I'm gonna take the temperature down to a more comfortable kind of a temperature. And then I'm gonna drive in a straight line just for a short distance and see what sort of numbers we get this time. So this time after a short drive, I get 29.4. That's a definite improvement from last time. So let's repeat the same thing again, but this time let's turn the heater off. So I'll do go for a drive, and this time I get 27 instead of 29.4. So that's a small saving, but to be honest, I got cold. I wasn't Let's put the car in economy mode and see what we get. Hopefully we'll get an improvement. So we'll do the same journey again and see what we end up with. And we get 27 this time, which is exactly. So this next lot of tests is going to be around the 100 kilometers per hour. So this is a normal mode with the heater turned on. So I'm going to travel a distance about 7.3 Ks and you can see I'm getting 31.2. This time we're going to put the car into eco mode and turn the heating off and see what sort of difference it makes. When you actually look at it though, it's not much difference. You can see right at the end of this run, I actually ran out of battery. So this is really good because the next lot of tests is going to be to see what sort of economy you get in hybrid mode.
So putting the car into normal mode, let's see what economy we get. Um, so we end up with 10.3 litres per 100 kilometre. I have to say that this is not what I was hoping for, it's quite a lot worse. So let's try this again, but this time putting the car into eco mode. Now I actually ended up with a much better result this time, 9.1. However, one thing I did realise after the fact was that even though I'd been doing all these tests all day, the engine was actually cold when I started that previous run, so it's hard to really tell the difference. But 9.1, I'm not sure if I'm happy with that either. I thought I would compare this with the specifications for the regular Outlander from the Mitsubishi New Zealand website. And the reality is 9 is what they say that, that car is going to get, so I don't suppose I can really complain. For my final test, I thought I'd see what sort of fuel economy I get on my drive home afterwards, now I've finished, which is about three and a half kilometers, but I didn't use any petrol at all during that time, enough charge to be given to the battery to get me home without using any petrol. So I definitely consider that to be a win. So that's the end of today's video. I hope everyone enjoys what they've seen and gets some useful information out of it. Now remember, of course, this is just my own personal experience. But having said that, this is real world, not the sort of thing that manufacturers do on a test track using whatever systems they use. So again, please like and subscribe and see you later. One last thing, you can see the best I've ever managed to achieve in this car is 19.6.